to jump in. If you're just tuning in, you guys have been prayed for. And if mama's watching, I love you. So that's good stuff. We're going to go ahead and get me a good drink of water because I think we're going to be on fire. As Mr. Bobby would say, he's warm. Mm -hmm. Well, like I say often, I believe this, this message is for everybody. I believe each message is for everybody if we're willing to apply it. How many people have been applying the messages that they hear here? Good. Because I tell you what, I think we all need it. I know I do. I say it many times. I'm preaching to me first. That's not just something I say. That's something I try to do each and every day. But I want to start out by talking about our title. There we go. Walking the wire. Now, in life, do you ever feel like you're in a balancing act a little bit? Walking that wire. I can tell you for me and my family, we've been walking the last few weeks, but it's not just me. It's not just my family. It's not just your family. It's everybody. Do you know that everybody has a story? Everybody has a story. And if you take time to listen, you might just be blessed by that story, or you might be encouraged to pray for somebody, or you might even calibrate your story and say, hey, it ain't that bad in my house, right? Now, I want to happen to tell you today that God's good even in the storm. How many people know that? Sometimes we need to remember that. See, a lot of times what we do, we rehearse the hurt instead of practice the promise. I'm going to be saying that a lot today because I have to remind myself that, that on a daily basis, too. Because a lot of times we can look and focus on all the things that are wrong. Does anybody do that in here? We do. We put it on the tape. We roll it back. We play it back. And then we call three people to tell them how bad it is. Then they tell us how bad it is. And then you got to top them. Am I speaking to anybody here? It got quiet real fast, but we, we can do that. What would happen if we flip that on its head and start walking by faith instead of by sight? And that's what I want to talk about today. 2 Corinthians 5, 7 says this here. It says, for we walk by faith, not by sight. Is that hard to do sometimes? It's tough. That's why it takes faith. And here's, we're getting ready to go into the holiday season. Woo! How many people love having everybody come over to their house? I do, we do. How many people get a little nervous and everything? You got to get everything just right? Oh, we'll pray for some folks now. Right? Because you got to have it right. The rose bush got to be down to two foot. Everything's got to be straight because I know that they're coming over and go, you know, I cannot believe there are rose bushes and stuff. <laughs> Drive four miles to go over to your house or four hours ago. You know, hang on back over, buddy and Denise, their, their rose bush was up about three and a half feet. What, what type of life are they living? <laughs> You got to laugh at some of the things sometimes, right? I mean, I just love having my family together and friends together. And how many know that family can be family, not even blood related? Somebody say amen. I got some awesome family here. I got some awesome family tuning in. And I'm going to tell you, I feel so blessed. But here's a few things that I see that come up in our life, especially in the holidays. It seems like it ramps it up in the holidays because everybody's going to know that you're going to celebrate being thankful for what God does. So the enemy wants to go ahead and hit you where he can. And then we're going to celebrate the birth of Christ. So the enemy wants to hit you where you are. So look at this. Does anybody have a little stress sometime? No, not at all. Not at all. I can't believe it, man. What's wrong with everybody? Oh, man, the lip gets tight, everything else. You know what would help me with my stress? A whole lot more prayer, right? And I appreciate all the prayer. If some people in the business world will just do what they say they're going to do when they say they're going to do it. Call the prescription in. I want a prescription when you say it's there. That'd be good because I don't want to go three times. Come on now. Don't get me started. But I'm just saying it's just over and over and over, right? Oh, yeah. Oh, we, you could come back in an hour. <laughs> That's what you said 30 minutes ago. A lot of times people's word doesn't mean that much anymore. As Christians, I pray that we pride ourselves on that. We're going to miss it sometimes. There's things that are out of our control. But I, I, I want my yes to be yes and my no to be no. How about you guys? So that can be stressful a lot of times, right? Here's something else I'm learning. Utilize the people that say they will help. Amen. Don't be too proud if they say they're going to do it. How about debt? Woo! That money can fly out the window right now. Just going, baby. Going, going, going. But there's good news. See, on today's special value, they'll push that stuff out for six payments. Y'all supposed to laugh there. <laughs> hey, you know, whatever it is, four payments. I can't afford $100. Can you give us $25 a week? Oh, yeah. Right? So what else we got? Jealousy. Mm. Insecurity. Pride. Ain't got no pride. Y'all got any pride? We always have to work on that. A little depression. How about a little, little guilt? 
woulda, shoulda, coulda? How about a little fear? Well, what happens if it don't do right? What happens if, it, what happens if the casserole don't take us like Aunt Margaret's? Oh, man, they probably cut you out the wheel. Right? I mean, the things that we actually worry about get silly, doesn't it? You know, it, it is. Oh, man, I don't know. How about guilt? The woulda, shoulda, coulda, like I said. Sin. How many people know that Jesus died for their sin? Jesus died for everything we talked about up here. But also, we find ourselves over and over and over walking the wire. I want you to visualize that. How many people have been to the circus before, maybe when they were younger, see stuff on TV, you know? They get the guy walking the tightrope. I'm going to be honest with you for a second. Do you ever feel like that's you? Maybe even as a Christian, maybe as a Christian leader or just, uh, just moms and dads, do you feel like you're walking the rope sometime? You're walking that because everybody's watching. They're just waiting for you to fall, right? But if you surround yourself with loving folks, they'll catch you when you fall. That's a blessing. Are you a pointer? Are you ones that turn around and get your arm out if they start to go? Are you one to root them on and say, you can do it? Come on. One more step, one more step, one more step. I remember when I was a kid, I used to do some crazy stuff. Anybody, Brian, don't say where? Anybody remember that? <laughs> do you remember that ditch we had in the, in the, in the, in the woods down there, that big deep ditch? We had this big dish, ditch. And when it would rain, man, that thing would flood. Now, let me ask you, how many people remember Evil Knievel? Guys, y'all remember Evil Knievel? I thought I was going to top him. That's why I walk like this. So I had the bright idea that I was going to cross that ditch, right? Because it had a beam, like a wire, but it had a beam like this. And it was probably from here to that wall. I said, you know what? If I go fast enough and straight enough, I can get to the other side of that. Guess what? I did once. So then, guess what? Pride came in. Of course, nobody was there to see me, so they didn't believe me. They said, you ain't do that. I said, oh, I did. I made it to the other side. I was over there doing a victory lap. Nobody was there to share it with you. Everything was good. So I rode my bicycle around, told everybody. I said, I rode across that wire right there. I rode across that little, that little, they said, that little, that little eye beam. I said, I did it. I don't believe it. So guess what? Pride swells up in there a little bit. Everything gets good. And I've been riding around with them sandy bald tires of mine. I said, let her rip. Watch this. This ain't nothing. Woo! Down she went. Now, sometimes this will take care of the pride. Sometimes God will allow you to get a good crowd for you to embarrass yourself. <laughs> now, many of y'all know that I am not an avid uh, swimmer. I'm a fat floaty at best. <laughs> Over I go with my bicycle. With my little sissy bar on the back with the peace sign on it. But I remember one of my buddies helped me out. Most of my so-called buddies were laughing. See, in life, when you're on this wire, there may be a lot of people that laugh and point. Maybe even try to shake the wire on you. But you will find somebody to help you through the other side. His name's Jesus. Now, sometimes he might look like Donna or Lynn or Barbara or Mickey or Brian. You can fill in the blank. But I'm going to tell you what. I'm thankful that I got those folks that had the fingerprints of Christ on their life. Because let me tell you what. Every day there's an opportunity to step out and walk by faith. And that's what I want to show us today. I want to encourage us. If you think that your wire is shrinking or your, the wind's too much blowing and all these different things, just realize you're not in it alone. God will help you and bring people into your life. Everybody said amen. If you're ready to roll, let's do it. So one of the things, I really got four building blocks of faith that we're going to share. And the first one, if you got your uh, handouts with you, we can work from here. The foundation of joy. Now, I'm going to tell you something that's crazy. Now, people, a lot of things been going on, as you all know, with my mom and everything in her health. My family deals with a lot of stuff through trusting God and laughing. I mean, we laugh at some crazy stuff. One thing with my mom and everything going through this, the woman, 90 years old, and she still can laugh. That does my heart good. 
Usually it's at me. Now she ain't said 10 words in 10 days, but one of the things she told me the other day, she said, you're silly. <laughs> you're silly. That's okay. Because you know what? A lot of times we get too serious about stuff, don't we? I'm serious about the gospel. I'm serious about loving one another. I'm serious about what God says in his word. But a lot of times we take ourselves too serious. And that's right there where you start really start working against yourself. But I'm going to tell you what. You want the foundation of, of joy? That foundation is on Christ. Let's take a look at this. I got a few good lines for you here. I said, joy is a gift from the Lord. It doesn't depend upon circumstances, but rather is found in Jesus. Somebody say amen. The unchanging character and promises. And that's exactly where we find true strength and power in life. If you're not there right now, you will be. If you've been there, you know it. If you're not there right now, Grab hold of it. Because life is constantly changing. What does it say here? It doesn't depend upon circumstances. We talked about joy a lot in the last few weeks. And I believe God's just been preparing a lot of these things in my life. How about you? Because there's a lot of things that happen in an instant. Look at what's going on in the world. Look at what's going on in lives. Look at what's going on all over the place. Things change. But you can still have the deep-rooted joy when you know the one that never changes. His name's Jesus. I love looking at it. And that's exactly where we find true strength and power to live by. People say, how you doing? I say, I'm hanging. I'm hanging. How about you? You ever, you, you ever have something going on in your life and you say, man, this is big. But it's not bigger than God. Aren't you glad that God says, hey, I got you. I talked about the circus earlier. You see the things and. Sometimes people have a net under them, and sometimes they don't. But I'm going to tell you, as a believer, you got a net. You got more than a net. You got a Savior. You got one that'll never let you hit the ground. He'll carry you right on down. He'll hold on to you. Let's take a look at this here. I love this verse. We've been going back to it, and I think the Lord is just birthing a new revelation to, to, to me in, 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 in my heart. Galatians 2.20 says, My old self has been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. Is Christ living in you? Have you put your faith and trust in the finished work of the cross, the death, burial, and resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ? Is it evident in your life? There used to be a, 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 a saying that people said, if you were put on trial for being a Christian, would they find you to be guilty? Think about that. Would they have enough evidence to convict you that you're a true Christian? You said, well, what do you mean? By the way you live, by the way you give, by the way you respond to people. We try to make it something that it isn't. But he's already made it what it's all about. It's about him. Let's go on. And he says, so I live in this earthly body by trusting in the son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. There was a great sacrifice for each one of us. Somebody say amen. And, and, and he saw your best on your worst day. Isn't that something? I really believe when we get to heaven, this is, just, this is me thinking this. The guy said, I'll give you children so you know just a little bit how much I love you. Because you will put up with stuff from your children you never put up with anybody else, wouldn't you? Because you love them. You just want the best for them. You invest in them. You pour in them. You just want them. You will sacrifice for them everything else because you love them. I think that just gives us a small glimpse of the love that God has for us. That agape love. That unconditional love. The world, what you'll see is I love you and everything's good. We want, if it's not, if it doesn't feel good, taste good, smell good, all this, we want, we're, we're out. I don't want to play no more. God is a full-time God. Aren't you glad? I mean, from the day that he saves you, you're saved. You're secure. He did the work. It's by the death, burial, and resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. It's by grace you're saved through faith out of yourself. But it's a gift to God. How many people out there still have not opened that gift? Man, I want to be the giver of that gift. Let me ask you a question. Don't raise your hand. When's the last time? That you shared your faith with somebody. When's the last time that you actually prayed with somebody? When's the last time that you gave outside of yourself for something that God's been nudging you to? That does not make you a Christian. That's the evidence that you are a Christian. Does that make sense? 
Holy Spirit working in your life, nudging you and you being obedient to what God's shown you and, and, and when to give and when to go and when to do and all these different things. But, but that's amazing when, when Paul's writing so many of these, these letters and stuff to the other churches, most of these, he was in prison. Can you imagine that? Shackled to guards. Some of these dungeons and all this. Man, we get all upset if, if we sit here for 35 minutes and the seat's too hard. Just saying, right? I can't believe, man, I'll tell you what. Do you know how long the line is at a Cracker Barrel? We want everything right now. What is it that God's calling you to do? To serve and, to, and just, just be used in a mighty way so that the foundation of joy that he's placed in your life can be shared with somebody else. I pray that my life will be a foundation of the joy. Now, ultimately, it's Jesus. You know that. But I want to represent him in a way they go, man, I know everything ain't cool with that guy, but he's still getting up. Man, I know they've seen some tough times, but he still keeps pointing to Jesus. Did y'all ever see that movie? What was the name of it? Ben Stiller's in it, Jess, and they got the, the, the night at the museum. Yeah. And they got one of those guys, and, and there's, there's a Roman soldier, and the other guy, he, Owen Wilson, he's in there, and they buddy up. And it just went in my mind, he said, I ain't going to quit you. I'm not going to quit you. It means I got you. That's where I'm at with the Lord. Lord, I'm, I'm not giving up. Now, I know he's not giving up. But I ain't switching dancing partners with nobody. I, I'm sticking to course. How about you? Because I know what he's done and I know what he'll do. And he'll do it for you. Somebody say amen. We got to keep on rolling. You guys need to get a little bit louder. We're talking about Jesus up in here. Here we go. How about walking in that relationship? Let's go through a couple of these. I said we experience the goodness of God and the joy of our salvation and our relationship displays our freedom in Christ, the benefit of blessing, redeemed, acceptance, forgiven, and loved. Anybody's blood pressure going down other than mine? Because that's what we got. Now, the world's not going to tell you that. They're going to tell you how much you owe, how far you're behind, how they can't fix it, should have done this, all that. But that's not what God does. We're redeemed, we're accepted, we're forgiven, and loved, man. Don't buy the lie. I'll give you something else. Don't hang out with people that buy the lie. I don't need no negative phone calls when I'm, I'm going through a thing. I just want to uplift the phone calls. I'm not saying lie to me. I'm not saying anything. Hey, help me pick the positive. How about that? Can you imagine that? Now, I love my dad. Y'all know that. I love my parents and everything else. But that is not the guy you want to come visit you in the hospital. I would never tell him when I was in the hospital. I said, don't tell him I'm in the hospital. Why? Because he probably depressed me. That don't look good. Man, dad, don't do that. <laughs> but, he was, but he would get so overwhelmed because that's his baby there. You know, man, this is not good. And he's thinking, he's thinking, how can I fix it? See, moms and dads, we try to, how can I fix it? There's things in this world that we can't fix. Amen? There's things in this world we can't fix. If we could, boom, we change it. But I'm going to tell you what, even in the midst of those things, God doesn't change. God keeps on rolling. That's the joy of our salvation. That's why I keep on rolling, man. That's what's going on there. Look at this. The joy of the Lord becomes contagious. What? Come on now. Have you all ever seen that? Have you seen negative people be contagious? Get one bad apple at the work. Get one bad apple in, in the team. See what happens. Next thing you know, everybody, well, I can't believe that. Boy, but I tell you what, I said it before. Y'all see this right here? That's the thermostat. What does it do? It sets the temperature for the room. As believers, we ought to be the, the thermostat to set the temperature in the room when we walk in. Right? Set the pace. Be there and say, hey, look, let me tell you what God's doing in my life. Let me tell you what God wants to do in your life. Everything else. You know, sometimes there's an opportunity to speak. Sometimes there's an opportunity to listen. Listening ain't a bad thing. I'm working on that. 
<laughs> and everybody that knew me was chuckled right there, right? But you know what? It can become contagious. Been back and forth to the rehab center with different things, and there's, there's, a, there's a young girl. She's got to be in her 20s or something. From the first day that I saw her, she's in a wheelchair, come around, she'd get up and do a few things, get back there, and, and it was contagious. Her smile was contagious. And I talked to her and everything, and she, she was very uh, uh, just well-spoken. And my sister was, was able to talk to her, and she said when she was a little girl, she was following her friend across the street. She got hit by a car. And, and a large amount of her memory was gone and different things like that. What a blessing. That girl helped us do this, helped us do that, everything else. It was contagious. So you know I had to say something about it. I said, let me tell you what, girl, you've been a blessing to me. So I waited till all the big wheels were in a room and everything. Oh, my, by the way, she volunteers. She's been volunteering for six or eight months. She gets, a, she gets on the handy ride in the morning. And they take her there and she says six and eight hours and volunteers all day long in a wheelchair back and forth. Got a smile as big as a street sign out there. Everything else. Never heard a girl complain. I've seen her for the last six weeks. Never complained anything else. All that right there. I said, man, I want to hang out with you. It's contagious. So I waited for her to roll out of the office and I went on into the room. I said, excuse, excuse me. They had all everybody doing all this. I said, excuse me. I said, the young lady that, that sits here and rolls out. Oh, yeah, they told me her name. I said, yeah. I said, can, can I tell y'all something about her? I know they thought I was going to have a complaint. I said, that girl is amazing. I said, let me tell you something. She's volunteering. Y'all going to miss out if you don't hire that girl. Let me tell you how big a blessing she's been to my family. Let me tell you about the joy that she's brought to my family. Just seeing her not give up. Just seeing her pick the positive. Just seeing her represent Christ in, in, in her crisis. In my crisis. Man, that's God on display in somebody's life. And that's contagious. The next day, she rolled out. Met me at the door. She said, Mr. Buddy. I said, hey, honey, how you doing? She said, I'm doing good. She said, do you know I got an award yesterday? That doesn't surprise me one bit. I think you ought to get one every day. She said, I know. It was you. I said, no, honey. It's been you the whole time. It's been you allowing God to work through you the whole time. Give God some praise, man. In the midst of that woman's storm, she's out there getting with it. My goodness, and it is contagious. Look at this. Goes right with it. Joy of the Lord inspires others. She says, Here we are. I'm talking about her today. I'm not talking about people that were negative. I'm talking about people that were positive. Look at that. Here you go. The joy of the Lord is our strength. It's rooted in the grace of God, not in the circumstances. Your circumstances will change. My circumstances will change. The Lord never changes. And I don't know about you, but when I'm walking that wire, I need to know that somebody's going to catch me. I need to know that if I keep my eyes on the prize and I keep walking and I keep walking, just one more step, just one more step, just one more step. One day I'm going to step off that. I'm going to step right into the arms of Jesus. I'm going to step right out of this world, right into heaven. How about you? Because of what Jesus done for me. See, that's what keeps me going. That's what keeps rolling right there. And I'm going to tell you what a lot of times we think, oh, yeah, I got time. I got time. Don't waste a day. How many people want to finish big for the Lord? How many people want to hear, well done, good and faithful servant? How many people bought the lie that you've been disqualified from some nonsense that you've pulled in your life? That's a lie from the enemy. I say this many times because I see it in my life and I see it in my friend's life and everything else. I see it all through the Bible. The very thing that you think may disqualify you might be the very thing that God uses in your life to help somebody else. The very thing, the very thing. Because I'm going to tell you what, when you come through something and come out the other side, that's the person I want to talk to when I'm dealing with it. How did that work for you? What can you tell me about that? And I'm going to tell you time after time after time again, you see people pointing to relationship with the Lord. That's the deal. 
That's the deal. Keep walking, keep working, keep going, keep praising the Lord. Anybody doing good yet? I thought y'all be rejoicing. Well, we need to rejoice always. How about that? Right on time, right on time. How about this? Look at this. Philippians 4, 4. Rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I'll say rejoice. Evidently, we needed a little nudging in the rejoicing business because they had to tell it twice, right? Rejoice in the Lord. David used to have to strengthen himself in the Lord, right? When everything else is going down, hey, think about that man's life. They tell him when he's a young boy, a teenager, that you're going to be the next king. What? And he spends the rest of probably the next 14, 15 years on the run from the king that's there now, Saul. But he was still being obedient to the Lord. Time comes, David becomes king. And once he became king, he never messed up, never had a problem and everything else. Right, wrong. Read the rest of the story. He got his eyes off the prize. Right? Just for a minute. And it started changing things. And so he didn't have to lie. And then he had to cover it up. And he had to do this. And there was death and, and hate and, and all these overthrowing things in his family. Did God still use him? He was quick to turn back to God. Did he have, I call it scar tissue. He had some scars from that, didn't he? But God refers to him a man after his own heart. But see, you have to look at the whole picture. It's a walk. He was on the wire, just like us. It's a balancing act sometimes, right? Just realize this. When we've got the Spirit of God in our life, it levels us out. It levels us out. It levels us out. When I was a kid, my granddad bought me this little mercury-filled duck. Do y'all ever see them? And he'd go like this. And, and, and my dad, my, my granddad, he loved to sing. And so he said, oh, Tom Dooley, lay down your head, Tom Dooley. That's all I got. About sound just like that, too. And I remember that my duck wasn't ducking like Donna's. And I'm the youngest, and I'm on my duck ain't working. So my granddad, he said, I'll fix it. Give me that thing. Melba, that's what he called my grandma. Melby, he ain't got enough juice in this thing. Well, it's mercury or something back in his days, right? Not a good thing. He said, well, his ain't got as much as Donna Lee's. That's what's going on right here. Here, I'll just take his head off and fill it up. Oscar, don't do that. Melba, don't tell me how to do that. I know what. Done run Tom Dooley's neck, slap off. Tom Dooley hung his head down that day. Now, I'm going to tell you what. I cried, and my sister laughed, and I cried, and she laughed. And, and I tell you, to this day, we think about that. See, he was going to fix it. He was going to fix it. He was going to fix it. Yo, let me see, let me see what I can do. Everybody said, don't do that. I know what I'm Snatch that duck off, boy, like he went that head off that duck, boy. Michael would have been proud. <laughs> but now, I think back about those things, and I rejoice. Not because the duck was broke. Because I had a granddaddy loving so much, he was going to try to fix it. Now, that's one thing I remember about my granddad. I'm going to tell you something else. My granddad, to this day, I've never seen anyone pray more than my grandfather. I used to think something was wrong with him. When my grandma died, he really buckled in. And he prayed and he prayed. And we'd be playing out in the little alley where they lived and everything else. And he would just be sitting there rocking and he would be praying and he'd be praying. There's no doubt in my mind he was praying for us kids. There's no doubt that things in my life are coming to fullness now because of the prayers of my family. How about yours? Grandmas, granddads, keep praying. Keep praying. Craziness. Me and Brian was visiting my mom the other day and they had a nurse come in there. <laughs> this lady said, you look like somebody I know. I said, I feel sorry for them. <laughs> now, y'all really going to laugh when I tell you this. Let me finish the story. She said, no, you remind me of some rock and roll guy. Brian's going, oh, Lord, here we go. I said, well, who might that be? She said, he's like from New Jersey. I said, that woman needs some help. She said, that Bon Jovi guy. Well, I happened to look up John the other day. We got the same hairdo now. <laughs> That's about all I can say. And we both living on a prayer, amen. <laughs> I was like, 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. And Brian said, he's our preacher. She said, no, he ain't. <laughs> he said, yeah. I said, yeah. She said, I thought you was a rock and roller. I said, I was. She said, you a preacher now? Yeah. Yeah. And that's something. And in the midst of that, my mom goes, mm. <laughs> Mm. As, as, as Tanya said to Miss Ruthie answer Mom what do you think about that mm. But we still rejoice Let's keep on going with that man I think back as I go through these things So many things I unpack in my life About different things that my family has shared with me Different things that I've shared with you guys And look at this this is why we can rejoice the Ways we can rejoice Worship You know we come today we're worshiping God What does that mean to you Do we push everything behind are we thinking about the words? Are we thinking about who he is? It's not hitting the wrong note or this or that. It's about getting our hearts in a position to praise God for all he's done. Did you thank him today? Did you thank him for waking you up today? Did you thank him for giving us a place today? Give us an opportunity to share the good news all over the world. Did you do that? Did you thank him today for moms and dads and grandparents and, and kids and for your job? Did you thank him today? How about for service? See, these are things we do because we know him, not to get to know him. How about that? What about service? Or do you hold up scorecards every time you do something for the Lord? There's people like that. I hadn't missed a day of Sunday school in 472 weeks. What was the message last week? Well, I don't know. <laughs> Just saying. Just saying. How about that? When we serve... Do we wait and get under the light? Look what I'm doing. Did I happen to tell you? Look what I did. Look what I did. Or do we serve out of the capacity that God has poured into us, the gift that he's given us? What about giving? As soon as you say giving, everybody shut down. Woo, what are you? It's all his anyway. You tell me one thing you got that God didn't give you. Didn't think I'd hear anything. He woke you up so you can make a living. You put that handsome husband in your life, the beautiful bride, I'm trying to help both sides today. Yeah, yeah, amen, that's it. All those things. What about going? See, a lot of times we get comfortable and we say, man, that's good. You ought to do that. I had one of my, my buddies when I first got in ministry. And, and, and we ate lunch and stuff. And I said, man, that's what God showed me. He said, man, that's good. I believe that. I'm standing with you and everything else. He said, but I want to tell you something. This is something I have to do. He's been in ministry quite a few years before me. He said, when somebody brings you a great idea, pray about it. And then tell them to find 10 people to help them with it and see what happens. You'll see how great the idea is. Y'all got that? Because what happens sometimes in church, at home, in business, you have somebody have all these great ideas, but they won't stand with you to walk across the, rock, the aisle to get it done. That's what I mean by going. Are we going to keep moving? We're going to keep going. We're going to keep giving. We're going to keep serving. Or are we just going to spit it out and go, hey, y'all ought to do that. I'll be over here in the comfort zone. God brings teams in. God brings unity. God brings different gifting in. Amen. You don't have to do it all. The only one that ever had to do it all and did it all was Jesus. Amen. You don't have to do it all. He calls us to work together. I call it spokes in the wheel for Jesus. Anybody rejoicing yet? Rejoice in the Lord again. Amen. Amen. Well, here's something else. I'm going to roll on with this here. Do you enjoy God? Do you enjoy God? Be honest with you. When I was little, I was afraid of God. Now, I have a reverence for God. He's holy. He, he knows every hair on my head. He, he knows my shorts coming. But what I found in my relationship is that I love him because he loves me. He first loved us. I want to respect the Lord. I want to serve the Lord. But I want to enjoy the Lord. How about you? How do we do that? Not just on Sundays. You'll be surprised the people you talk to. And, and I, I said this before, y'all, I, I know that this just makes me laugh every time. As a preacher, now I say this many times, I am not the church police. I am not riding around on Sunday evening or Saturday night seeing where you at, what you're putting in your, in your food line basket. 
It's crazy. I will go from here, right? Go down the food line. I'll see somebody after service and they, they'll see me. They will jump behind the beans and everything else. Try to get up. Oh, and then you turn around. You caught me. I'm just looking for some jello. I didn't catch you. Well, then the list comes out. I was going to come today, but you know, I had this and everything else. I'm going, yeah, can I get my jello? Can I get my pudding pops, whatever I'm looking for? You don't need to tell me. I know things come up, everything else, but it's comical. Because I'm, I'm telling you, man, they'll be back over there, man. Especially produce is a good hiding place, evidently. I think more people, I'll go down in the back, over there, man, they're back, they're back in the broccoli and everything else, all this. And I'm going, what's up? And then sometimes I mess with them because I know I see them, they see me. And I give them the one. I go like I ain't seeing. And I go, oh, you know what? They go, hey, how you doing? How you doing? I go, hey, you know what? What's going on? Haven't seen you in a while. That's good. You got to have fun with it. You got to have fun with it. And then they tell you about all the things going on in your life. You know what I love to tell them? Now? I said, we just preached on that. We just preached on that. We just preached on that. I'm not coming down here. I'm, I, sometimes we are, we are funny. We are funny folks sometimes. So enjoy the Lord, not just on Sundays. How about this? Live a vibrant life. Do people know that you're saved? Not because you're a bumper sticker. Not because you're a little fish sticker. None of those things. Not because you're tattoo. I had one of the guys that come to where we work, and he had this really, y'all might, I did a message on this. He had this really big tattoo of the crucifixion and everything. I said, man, tell me about that. He said, oh, yeah, man, I got that done. This guy gave me a deal on it and everything else. I said, but do you know the guy in the picture? What? What does that mean to you? I just thought it was cool. Oh, I think it's more than cool. I think it's life. I think it's eternal life. Do you know that the Lord allowed me to flip that man's hand over and tell him and walk him through the whole gospel and the man gave his life to the Lord? Isn't that amazing? We can walk around with stuff tattooed on our body and never get it in our heart, man. Not just on Sundays. Isn't that amazing? Just saying. Let's keep on rolling. Have confidence in Christ. Oh, man, I'm going to tell you what. People say, well, you're pretty confident. Not in me, in him. Confident in Christ. Whew. And experience his presence. Let me ask you a question. Are you confident in Christ? Are you confident in what Jesus has done for you in Christ? Have you grabbed hold of that by faith? Think about that. Because when the doctor gives you the tough report, you better be confident in Christ. When a man jumps to meet and hits your car, you better be confident in Christ. All those things. When you're walking on that wire and the wind's blowing and the devil's shaking the wire, you better be confident in Christ. You can be confident in Christ today by trusting Jesus. Let me tell you what. He's the counterweight that pulls everything together. He's the plumb line that gets us through the other side. He's the author and finisher of our faith. He's the one that gave it all. He's the one that rose on the third day. He's the one that's sitting on the right-hand side of God. How much more you want? We could just keep on going. See, that's what I have to remind myself of. Remember what I said earlier? Don't rehearse the hurt. Practice the promises. Man, whoo, you ever had a tough season in your life? You better know them promises. You better hold on to them promises, right? Let me ask somebody something. Being a Christian, does that mean things are easy all the time? Does it, does it? Does that mean your kids never have a problem? You got a straight A on every class and never late for supper? No. Okay, Jesse, you off the hook. He did get straight A's though most of the time. God bless him, he takes after his mama. But I'm going to tell you what. We can have confidence. Do you experience his presence? Does God seem distant to you today? Does God seem like he's not listening to you today? I want to help you with that. He didn't leave. He's not the one that walked away. I'll go one better. In my life, let's be honest, there's days that seem much more vibrant than, they, than other days. It's just, just the way it is. But God never left. And so what I have to make sure that I do, that I, I make sure that 
Seeking the Lord and spending time with the Lord is a priority in my life. Is it for you? It's got to be. If you want to grow, if you want to enjoy God, you want to practice his presence, you need to be sticking to the stuff. And guess what? Even that, the cares of the world sneak in. I'm bringing it home. Everybody doing all right? Look at this. We talked about this earlier. I'm going to bring them home here. Stress. You ever felt like that pressure cooker? I got a pressure cooker story. Years ago, in a different lifetime, a friend of mine was cooking at my house, and we had a pressure cooker going. And my boy Earl, Dirty Cecil, was over there. And Sharon was cooking on this pressure cooker. And I saw her mom. She had, you, you remember the ones that does the little... <laughs> Vegetable beef soup, baby. It was getting close. I said, Earl, why don't you stick around? Why don't you eat? What y'all having? Oh, we having vegetables. Well, I think I will. Matter of fact, I will. So she goes to, 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 to do like her mama did before. Her mama would open that thing up and, and kind of let, let the pressure off a little bit. Well, she didn't let all the pressure off like her mama used to. And she undid that thing. Bow! <laughs> It was not pretty. It was like Mount St. Helen. Woo, it was blowing. And Earl went, ah, ah. And he ran out the back door. I'm telling you. Now, this is a man who loves to eat. He's running from the food. He got back in there. I said, are you all right? You all right? She got, she's got corn in her hair. <laughs> Beans all down her neck and everything. I said, y'all right? Y'all right? How many fingers I got? She said, what happened? Earl said, thank the Lord. A lima bean got hung in the end and saved us all, right? <laughs> Whew. You got to make sure you let that pressure off, man. You got to let that pressure off. Saved by a butter bean. No, saved by the grace of God. When I left that house, I lived there 10 years. We sold that house. I kept painting the ceiling, painting the ceiling, and about every three months, all that juice would bleed back through. It was impregnated into the ceiling, man. I ain't telling you where I used to live. We had fear that day. Because <laughs> all we saw is danger. It was loud. It was big. It was hot. It was tough. We see that each and every day. The enemy wants to make that wide screen right there on a fear. Bring it on home. And then we have guilt. Now, I'm going to tell you as a pastor, I talk to a lot of people about a lot of things. And this stuck in my mind. I was thinking about this the other day. I knew a lady at another church I went to. And I'm going to tell you what. This lady served her mother amazing. Her mother sick and she took care. They were like best friends. They come to church together and everything else. Her mother got sick. She stayed with her, everything else. Her mom was very close to meeting the Lord. And she went to go get some supplies and came back. And her mother passed. She had so much guilt. She said, my mom died alone. I said, your mom didn't die alone, honey. Your mama knew the Lord. And I try to remind her of all the steps. I can promise you this as a parent. I'd rather have all those steps when you were with me than the last few minutes. That's great if you can make it. That's good too. But see, she didn't have no need to be guilty. Because they did the parties. They did the eating out. They did the, the, the jewelry shopping. They did the picnicking. They did all the stuff. They went to church together. They praised the Lord together. Everything else. I said, baby, don't, don't let the enemy lie to you like that. No. Stop it. You have served your mother well. See, a lot of times we allow that to take hold. Depression's coming. Boy, the enemy wants to ride your back. And then guess what? Wants to tell you how insecure you are. And he wants to deal with the unforgiveness. Anybody ever went through some of those? Let's be honest. I think we all have. Praise God, we ain't got to stay there. We don't have to stay there. Depression is a real thing. But I can tell you what it breaks out. A real God. A real God that loves you and has made a way for you. Insecurity. Anybody ever feel insecure? I laugh about it now. I do. I'm thinking, <laughs> I can't believe they're going to ask me to preach this Sunday. 
This is amazing. I love it because when I come in, I am relying on the Lord. I wouldn't, judge, I, I, I wouldn't turn around and say, Buddy Chapman, little Buddy Lee, ain't about me. It's about God. Less of me, more of him. And see, the more I get out of the way, the more you realize it's about him. Man, my insecurity when I, put, when I, when I laid up against the backdrop of the cross ends up becoming my greatest security. You with me? I'm insecure in me, but I'm not insecure in him. So I just need to be with him. And guess what? I'm in him, so therefore I don't have to be insecure. I'm secure in Christ. How about you? You see how it works? Just go ahead and get giving it back to the Lord. See, what happens when you get the in and the uns and all these different add-on things, you add to it. You don't need to add to the, cro the cross. You don't have unforgiveness in Jesus. You have forgiveness in Jesus. Right? Breaking the chains. Sets you in the family. Man, oh man, oh man, is anybody excited about what God's done for them? The cares of the world, they're real, but they ain't forever. And guess what? There's one that sets them all straight. I don't care what wire you're walking. I don't care what's been going on in your life. I, and I'm not making any uh, light of your situation. But I'm going to point the light that I have to Jesus. How about you? How about you? Let the cares of the world stay in the world and jump over with Jesus. Turn around and keep on going. Look at this here. Galatians 5.22 for the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, goodness, kindness, gentleness, faithfulness, and self-control. That's what we have with Jesus. And I pray, as you think back on this message today, we had some laughs. We had some stories. But we have the truth that will set you free. We have one that's closer than a brother. We have one that will walk with you on that tightrope. We have one that will catch you when you fall. We have one that loves you so much. Even on your worst day, he sees the best you can be. He's not quitting you. Let's not quit him. Let's keep on going. Let's keep on rolling. Guess what? As we go into the holidays, how many know what's coming this week? Don't say Turkey Day. It's Thanksgiving, right? That means a lot of different things for a lot of different people. Some people got pilgrim shoes and the funny hats. I'm talking about thank you, Jesus. Amen? Guess what? I ain't got to wait till Thursday to thank Jesus. I'm going to thank him today. How about you? How about this? Maybe there's somebody you need to invite. Maybe there's somebody you need to forgive. Maybe it's the person in the mirror. Maybe somebody needs a meal. Maybe you need to check on your neighbor you ain't seen in a while. How about that? I got a neighbor. He's got to be 90-some years old, whatever like that. You know what? He found out I went through a tough time. You know who's at my door? My neighbor. See, I'm always thinking I'm going to take care of him and look out for him. And we got some great neighbors and everything else. He banging on the door. What can I do for you? Wow. From the end of this room to the end of that room, every one of y'all been a blessing. I cannot thank you enough for the prayers and the going and the getting and the going and the praying and the checking, all that stuff. Let me tell you what. That's what family does, man. That's what, that's what it does. See, that's kindness. That's faithfulness. That's gentleness right there. That's patience. That's peace. That's love. And I have got to see that from all of you, and I am grateful. I am thankful. And guess what? It doesn't go one-sided. It does not go one-sided. I have seen you guys pull together in such an amazing way. And I'll, be, I'll say like Grandma, it's humbling when you're on the receiving end. But I'm going to tell you what. I'm thankful. Let's pray. Father God, I thank you for all you do and what you've done on the cross. But Lord, I thank you for what you're doing right now in the hearts of those that are listening, in the hearts of those that are here. Father, I pray that when we feel like we're walking on the wire, we realize we're not alone. Father, I pray that, that when things get tough and it's an uphill battle, that we, we realize that we're not in this alone. I pray, Lord, like I said earlier, Father, that we stop rehearsing the hurt and we continue, continue to practice the promises of the Lord Jesus Christ, that we are saved, that we are secure, that we're more than conquerors, that we have victory in Jesus, that no, no sin is going to be held against us. There's no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. Man, we need to live the gift. We need to walk that out. You say, well, buddy, that's good. Uh, what must I do to be saved? Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. Realize that we all have sin. Make it personal. Realize that our sin, your sin, my sin, 
The sin that, that was imputed to us from Adam's fall in the garden has been imputed to us. But the seed of the Savior has also been given for us. And we can rest in the fullness of forgiveness through the death, burial, and resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. The Bible says if we confess with our mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in our heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. I got to tell you this. I'm not talking about mumbling words. I'm not talking about signing up for church. I'm not talking about giving. I'm talking about getting, getting right with God by asking God to come into your life. Jesus, come into my life. I believe you're the son of God. I believe that you died for my sin, Lord. Today, forgive me of my sin. Come into my life. I believe you're the son of God that takes away the sin of the world. Lord, help me to walk this out for you. In Jesus' name. If you prayed that today, you're listening, contact somebody. Drop us a line. We want to pray for you, pray with you. If you're here today and that was your prayer, tell somebody today. Confess them before men. Anybody excited about what Jesus has done for them, give them a little bit of praise. Amen.